It was a new morning, bright and full of hope. Jessica woke up to the sound of birds singing outside her window. Their happy songs were very different from the confusing sounds of English that she heard in her dreams. Today, she had made a decision. She was going to conquer English pronunciation and intonation. Today, her journey towards fluency would truly begin. After her morning rituals of stretching and sipping her favorite green tea, Jessica sat down at her small wooden desk. It was covered with English books and notebooks, each page a testament to her dedication. Despite her progress, the melody of English, its rise and fall, its stress and rhythm, still eluded her. But Jessica was not one to give up. She knew that mastering these would make her English sound natural, almost like a native speaker, and that was her dream. First, she reviewed her plan. It was simple and yet challenging. Dedicate the entire day to practicing pronunciation and intonation. She would start with the basics, move on to the melody, apply her skills in real-world scenarios, and seek feedback to improve. With a deep breath, she opened her first notebook to a page labeled warm-up. Jessica stood up and cleared her throat. She looked in the mirror and smiled. Let's start, she said to her reflection. She began with tongue twisters, a fun way to warm up her mouth and practice sounds. She sells seashells by the seashore, she repeated, focusing on the SH and S sounds. At first, the words jumbled together, but slowly, they began to sound clearer. She felt her mouth muscles working, her tongue twisting and turning to shape the sounds. Next, she pulled out her colorful pronunciation chart. Each vowel and consonant had a picture and an example word. Jessica went through each one, careful to position her lips and tongue correctly. The TH sound was always a challenge, but she persisted until she could hear the difference between this and sis. As the clock ticked on, Jessica moved to the heart of her plan, intonation. English wasn't just about the right sounds, it was about the music in the sentences too. She listened to recordings of native speakers, noting how their voices rose and fell. Questions sounded different from statements, and emotions changed the tune of the words. Jessica tried to mimic the patterns recording herself on her phone to see how close she got to the original. Her room was filled with the sounds of repetition, each sentence a step closer to her goal. She practiced asking questions, where is the library, watching her intonation rise at the end. She expressed excitement, that's amazing, letting her voice dance with the emotion. By mid-morning, Jessica felt ready for a break. She had been working hard, and her mind was buzzing with new knowledge. She prepared a light snack, cut apples and peanut butter, and allowed herself to relax. As she chewed, she thought about the next step, using her skills in a real conversation. The thought was both exciting and scary. After her snack, Jessica returned to her desk, more determined than ever. She grabbed her bag and her English notebook, ready to step out into the world and practice what she had been working on all morning. She knew that the real test of her progress would be communicating with others. Before she left her room, Jessica stood once more in front of the mirror. She took a deep breath and spoke to her reflection. You can do this. You are brave, and you are ready. With a nod to herself, she turned and stepped out the door, the bright sunlight greeting her like a warm embrace. Today was more than just another day. It was the day Jessica would embrace the melody of English and make it her own.
and as she walked towards the cafe down the street, her heart raced with the thrill of challenge and the joy of learning. It was the dawn of determination, and Jessica was ready to meet it head on. Jessica stepped into the morning air, her heart filled with the thrill of her mission. Today was not a day like any other, it was the day she would build a strong foundation for her English pronunciation. She made her way to the park, where she could practice without worry. At the park, Jessica found a quiet corner under a tall, leafy tree. She opened her notebook to the section labeled the foundation. Here, she had listed all the sounds of English that she needed to master. As a gentle breeze played with the leaves above, she began her practice with the vowels. A, E, I, O, U, she recited carefully, trying to make each sound clearly. She remembered her teacher's advice, each vowel has its own personality, get to know them. Jessica repeated the vowels, imagining each one as a different friend. A was open and welcoming like a wide smile. E was cheerful and bright. I was sharp and neat. O was round and smooth. And U was relaxed and calm. After the vowels, Jessica turned her attention to the consonants. She tackled each one at a time, saying them out loud, then in words, and finally in short sentences. B as in ball, D as in dog. T as in T. She felt the shapes and vibrations of each sound in her mouth. Jessica then moved to consonant pairs that were tricky for her, like TH in thought and S in C. She had to stick out her tongue a little for TH, which made her giggle. But she kept practicing until it felt more natural. For S, she had to hiss like a snake which made her feel a bit silly, but it was fun too. She spent extra time on the sounds that were not in her native language. Though our sound was particularly tough, it was different from the rolling or she was used to. She practiced it by saying red, rain, and river, paying attention to the way the sound came from the back of her mouth. As she worked through the sounds, she listened to the voices around her, children playing, people chatting, and even the birds singing. She tried to mimic the intonation in their speech, the rise and fall of their tones. Intonation is the music of language, her teacher had said. Jessica wanted to capture that music. Next, she practiced stress and rhythm, tapping her foot to the rhythm of sentences. I want to go to the store. She stressed the important words and let the others flow in between. It was like a dance, where some steps were strong and others were light. Jessica spent the rest of the morning repeating phrases and sentences. How are you? She would ask the empty space, making sure her voice rose at the end to show it was a question. I'm fine, thank you. She would answer herself, her tone falling back down. After a while, she took a short break to drink water and rest her voice. She looked around at the other park goers, all absorbed in their own activities. She felt a moment of shyness about practicing out loud in public, but she shook it off. This was her dream, and it was worth a little embarrassment. After her break, Jessica stood up and stretched. She had been sitting for a long time, and her legs were stiff. She took a deep breath and decided it was time for the next step, practicing with real people. Feeling a bit nervous but excited, Jessica packed her notebook into her bag. She had laid a strong foundation with her morning practice, and now it was time to build on it. With her heart beating fast, she started walking towards the nearby cafe where she could try speaking with someone. The walk to the cafe was short, but to Jessica, it felt like a journey. 
She was about to step out of her comfort zone and into a place where her English would be tested in real conversations. But she was ready. She had the foundation, and now it was time to build something great upon it. Jessica arrived at the cafe and took a deep breath before opening the door. The smells of coffee and pastries welcomed her as she stepped inside, her journey of learning continuing with each step. Jessica pushed open the door to the cafe, her notebook tucked securely under her arm. The warm, inviting scent of freshly brewed coffee and sweet pastries filled the air and the soft murmur of conversations created a comforting backdrop of human voices. It was the perfect place to explore the melody of English, the intonation and rhythm that she'd been practicing under the tree. Taking a seat at a small table by the window, Jessica set down her notebook. She watched the people around her, observing how they spoke to each other. She noticed a young woman asking, Could I have a cup of coffee, please? With her voice rising and falling in just the right places. A man at the counter said, I'll have a blueberry muffin, with stress on blueberry, making the flavor stand out in his sentence. Feeling inspired, Jessica opened her notebook to a new page and wrote the word intonation. She began to listen and jot down notes. The way questions seemed to dance upward at the end, the full stops dropping down with finality, and the excited exclamations bouncing like little balls of energy. English really was like music, and she was determined to join the chorus. Next to intonation, she practiced the stress patterns of English. She whispered to herself, emphasizing different words in the sentence to see how the meaning changed. I never said she stole my money could have many meanings, depending on which word she stressed. It was a fascinating discovery, how the same sentence could tell different stories. With her confidence building, Jessica decided it was time to order. She called over the waitress with a polite hand wave and said, May I have a glass of water, please? Remembering to stress water and to make her voice rise at the end of the question. The waitress smiled, nodded, and said, Of course, coming right up. Jessica felt a rush of pride. Her practice was paying off. While waiting for her water, Jessica continued her observations. She noticed the rhythm in people's speech the natural pauses, the short and long sounds, the quick and slow sentences. She tapped her fingers lightly on the table, trying to catch the rhythm of the conversations around her. It was like each person had their own drumbeat, and together they created a symphony of speech. Then her water arrived, and Jessica took a moment to thank the waitress. She tried to sound as friendly and natural as the other customers. Thank you very much, she said, and the waitress replied with a warm, you're welcome. This small exchange was music to Jessica's ears. She was actually speaking English with proper intonation and rhythm. Feeling braver, Jessica listened to a group of tourists at the next table. They were chatting excitedly about their travels. Jessica picked up phrases like we went to the museum and the food was fantastic. She repeated the phrases under her breath, trying to capture the same excitement in her voice. Time flew by, and soon Jessica had filled several pages with notes on intonation and rhythm. She had listened, practiced, and even participated in English conversations. She felt her understanding of the melody of language growing. Each success, no matter how small, was a step closer to her dream of fluency. But the real test was still to come. Jessica had planned to have a longer conversation with someone in English today, and she had just spotted an opportunity. 
A friendly-looking woman had taken the table across from her and was trying to decide what to order. Jessica gathered her courage, stood up, and walked over to her. Excuse me, she started, her voice steady but friendly. I see you're looking at the menu. The cheesecake here is really good, if you like sweets. Her intonation rose and fell naturally, just as she had practiced. The woman looked up and smiled. Oh, thank you for the suggestion. I do have a sweet tooth, she replied, engaging in conversation. They talked about the different pastries the cafe offered, and Jessica was careful to maintain the rhythm and melody in her speech. She felt like she was truly connecting, not just with the language, but with another person through the language. After a pleasant chat, Jessica returned to her table, her heart full of joy. She had not only practiced the melody of language, but had also made a connection. It was a beautiful harmony, the meeting of practice and real-life use, and it played the sweetest tune of all, the sound of progress. With the warm sun streaming through the cafe window and casting a soft glow on her table, Jessica felt a surge of confidence. She had just had a real conversation in English with all its ups and downs in intonation, and it went well. But now, she was ready for more, she was ready for a challenge. Jessica gathered her things and decided to head to a nearby bookstore, a place where she could continue her English adventure. Walking through the streets, she practiced her pronunciation silently, moving her mouth to form the words without making a sound. The bustling city around her seemed like a living classroom, offering endless opportunities to learn. Upon arriving at the bookstore, Jessica was greeted by rows upon rows of books in English. She wandered through the aisles, her eyes scanning the titles. Then, an idea struck her. She would pick a book and read a passage out loud practicing her pronunciation and intonation in this new, more challenging setting. She selected a book of short stories, found a quiet corner, and opened to a random page. Taking a deep breath, she began to read, her voice soft but clear. She paid attention to the punctuation, letting commas and periods guide her pauses. She emphasized key words and let her tone rise and fall with the narrative. As she read, she became so engrossed in the story and her pronunciation that she didn't notice a staff member approaching her. Excuse me, he said, a gentle smile on his face. You seem to be really enjoying that book. But could I ask you to read a bit more quietly? This is a bookstore after all. Jessica's cheeks flushed with embarrassment, but then she realized this was another learning opportunity. I'm so sorry, she said, making sure to stress sorry and let her tone show her apology. I'm practicing my English pronunciation. The staff member's smile widened. No problem at all. It's great to see someone so dedicated to learning. If you want, I can help you with pronunciation. Jessica couldn't believe her luck. Here was a native speaker offering to help her. She nodded eagerly, and they sat down together at one of the bookstore's reading tables. The staff member patiently listened to Jessica read and gave her tips on how to pronounce certain difficult words. Try to relax your mouth more when you say this word, he suggested, or the stress is on the second syllable here. Jessica repeated the words and phrases, grateful for the help. With each new try, she could hear her pronunciation becoming clearer, more confident. They worked together for a while, going through different passages in the book. 
Jessica was so focused on her practice that she barely noticed the time passing. The staff member was kind and encouraging, correcting her gently and praising her progress. When it was time to leave, Jessica thanked the staff member profusely. Thank you for your help, she said, her intonation expressing her sincere gratitude. You've been so kind. It was my pleasure, he replied. Keep practicing, and you'll be speaking like a native in no time. Jessica left the bookstore with a new book in hand and a heart full of happiness. She had not only practiced her pronunciation but had also received valuable feedback from a native speaker. It was more than she had hoped for when she set out that morning. The day was far from over, and Jessica wanted to keep the momentum going. She decided to visit the local market, where she could listen to more English speakers and perhaps even have another conversation. The challenge of real-life practice was turning out to be both exciting and incredibly helpful. As she walked to the market, Jessica reflected on the day so far. She realized that with each conversation, each sentence read out loud, and each word pronounced correctly, her fear was slowly fading away. She was building confidence, one syllable at a time. She arrived at the bustling market and took a moment to listen to the symphony of sounds around her. Vendors called out their prices, shoppers chatted about their purchases, and children laughed as they played. It was the perfect place for her next challenge. Jessica took a deep breath, stepped forward, and let the melody of English guide her into the crowd. Each word she would speak, each sentence she would form, was another note in her day-long song of learning English. The market was a colorful tapestry of sounds, sights, and smells. Jessica felt the buzz of activity around her as she made her way through the stalls. Her heart beat with excitement, this was her stage to practice the day's lessons in English pronunciation and intonation. She stopped at a fruit stall, the vibrant colors of the produce drawing her in. How much is this? she asked the vendor, pointing to a basket of shiny red apples, her intonation rising at the end of the question. The vendor looked up, a friendly grin on his face. Two pounds for a dollar, he replied. Jessica nodded and responded, I'll take two, please emphasizing the word to and carefully pronouncing the th sound. The vendor handed her the apples, and she completed the transaction smoothly and successfully, paying for her purchase. As she walked away, munching on a crisp apple, she felt a sense of pride. Each word had come out clearly, each sentence melody had been just right. This was a breakthrough. The world of English was opening up to her, one conversation at a time. She continued to weave through the market, her ears tuned to the language around her. At a nearby stall, a woman was selling homemade bread, the warm, yeasty scent wafting through the air. Jessica approached and listened as the woman talked about her baking process. She used words like need and rise which Jessica repeated quietly to herself, focusing on the new vocabulary and their sounds. Feeling more confident, Jessica struck up a conversation with the baker, asking about the different types of bread. The baker was enthusiastic, her intonation full of passion as she described each one. Jessica listened intently, not just to the information, but to the way the baker used English the natural rhythm of her speech, and how she stressed certain words for effect. They talked for several minutes, and Jessica found herself getting absorbed in the discussion, her pronunciation and intonation flowing more naturally than ever before. It was as if all the practice had built up to this moment, this effortless exchange of words and laughter. 
the baker, noticing Jessica's interest, offered her a sample of her specialty bread. Here, try this, she said, stressing try as she handed over a warm slice. Jessica accepted, saying, thank you. It looks delicious, with genuine excitement in her voice. After the taste test, Jessica complimented the baker on the delicious bread, carefully articulating her words. It's excellent. You're very talented, she said, her intonation showing her appreciation. The baker beamed with pride, and Jessica felt a warm glow of happiness at being able to express her feelings so clearly. With the afternoon sun beginning to dip lower in the sky, Jessica decided it was time to head home. She had spent the day immersed in English, from the quiet reading in the bookstore to the lively conversations at the market. She had faced her challenges head-on and had experienced a real breakthrough in her language skills. As she walked home, she went over the day's events in her mind. She thought of the words of encouragement from the bookstore staff member, the engaging chat with the baker, and all the small, successful interactions in between. She had pushed through her fears and had come out stronger. Jessica felt a sense of achievement. She had not only practiced her English but had lived it. She had turned the rhythm and melody of the language into a symphony of her own making. It was a tune she would continue to refine, but today, she had laid down the first harmonious notes. Back in her room, Jessica reflected on her progress. She realized that learning a language was not just about the words and rules, it was about connection. By speaking to others, she connected not just through language, but through shared human experiences. Before going to bed, Jessica opened her notebook and wrote down her thoughts and experiences from the day. She wrote about her successes and the areas she still wanted to improve. She made a promise to herself to continue practicing, to keep pushing the boundaries of her comfort zone, and to never stop learning. She closed her notebook, a satisfied smile on her lips. Today had been a day of breakthroughs and learning, a day that had brought her one step closer to her dream of mastering English. Tomorrow, she would continue her journey, but for now, she could rest knowing she had done her best. As the evening light cast golden hues over the city, Jessica felt the comforting fatigue that comes from a day well spent. Her journey through the English language had been both exhilarating and exhausting, and as the day wound down, she found a quiet bench in a peaceful corner of the park to reflect on her achievements. This morning, the idea of speaking English with confidence seemed like a mountain too high to climb. But, step by step, word by word, she had ascended far beyond her expectations. With the chatter of the market still echoing in her mind, Jessica took out her notebook once again. The pages were filled with new words, observations on intonation, and the rhythmic patterns of conversations she had bravely joined. Now, she decided to revisit some of the phrases she had struggled with earlier in the day. This thought, she practiced, carefully shaping the th sound is important, she continued, stressing the second syllable just as she had learned. The park, with its symphony of rustling leaves and distant voices, seemed to encourage her efforts. With the market's din replaced by the tranquil whispers of the evening, Jessica took the opportunity to speak aloud, finding comfort in the solitude. She recited sentences from her notebook focusing on the flow of English, the melody of its phrases, the dance of its stresses and pauses. Her voice was steady, her pronunciation more accurate than it had been just hours ago. 
she practiced asking questions with the right intonation, imagining a real conversation. Where can I find the library? She inquired to the empty air, her voice lilting upward at the end, just as it should in a question. Can you help me? She tried another, her intonation rising in polite request. As she continued, she noticed a family nearby, enjoying a picnic. They were speaking English, and Jessica couldn't resist the urge to listen and learn. Their laughter and lively dialogue were infused with the intonations and rhythms she had been studying all day. It was like a live lesson, and she soaked up every word. The family's children played a game, running around and shouting to one another. Catch me if you can, one child called out, his statement bouncing with joy and challenge. Jessica repeated the phrase quietly to herself, matching the child's intonation and stress. It felt like playing a game with the language itself. As the sky began to turn from blue to shades of pink and purple, Jessica closed her eyes and listened to the world around her. She let the English words she overheard mix with the gentle evening breeze, the chirping of the birds, and the distant hum of traffic. It was all part of the day's learning tapestry. She opened her eyes and watched as the family packed up their things, their day in the park coming to an end. She felt a kinship with them. They were part of her learning journey, even if they didn't know it. She whispered a quiet thank you to the fading light for the unintentional lessons. Feeling replenished by the tranquility around her, Jessica decided to practice one more task before the day ended. She would create a short story using all the new words and intonation patterns she had learned. She took a deep breath and began to weave a tale about a character named Anna who explored a magical forest. Her voice rose and fell with the drama of the story, her intonation painting pictures in the air. By the time her story reached its happy ending, the sun had dipped below the horizon, and the first stars were beginning to twinkle in the twilight sky. Jessica felt a profound sense of satisfaction. Her persistent efforts throughout the day had turned into tangible progress. Standing up from the bench, she stretched her arms toward the sky, taking in a deep breath of the crisp evening air. Today, she had lived in English, she had spoken, listened, and thought in the language. The day's experiences had been etched into her mind, each one a building block in her journey toward fluency. As she walked home under the emerging stars, Jessica felt gratitude for the day's challenges and triumphs. She knew that her journey with English was far from over, but today had been a pivotal point. She had persisted, and she had grown. In her cozy room, Jessica prepared for bed, her notebook by her side. She would rest now, knowing that tomorrow, she would rise to meet the language with fresh energy and a heart full of determination. Today's sunset marked not only the end of a day but also the beginning of all her tomorrows filled with the melody of English. The night had wrapped the city in a velvet blanket, speckled with the glimmer of streetlights. Jessica sat at her desk the soft lamplight casting a warm glow over the pages of her notebook. The quiet of her room was a stark contrast to the day's adventures, providing a sanctuary for her to reflect and plan for the future. Her notebook lay open, filled with the day's lessons, a testament to her dedication. She skimmed through the pages, each word a memory, each sentence a victory. Today. She had not only practiced English but had lived it fully, engaging with the world in a dance of dialogue and discovery. With her pencil poised, Jessica began to write a new entry in her notebook. The Night of Achievements, she titled it, 
and started to chronicle the day's successes. She wrote about the confidence she felt when ordering water at the cafe, the helpful feedback from the bookstore employee, the enjoyable exchange with the baker, and the melodic inspiration from the voices at the market. She paused, a smile spreading across her face as she remembered the moments of connection. The simple, how much is this, that began a conversation, the laughter shared over the sample of bread, the subtle nod of understanding from the bookstore staff. Each interaction was a small but significant step toward her goal of fluency. The room was silent, but in Jessica's mind, the words kept flowing. She turned to a new page and started to list the goals for the coming days. Practice with a friend, she wrote, then watch an English movie without subtitles, and join an English-speaking club. The list grew, each goal a promise to herself that she would not stop learning, not stop striving for excellence in English. As she finished her list, Jessica felt a surge of excitement for the future. Her journey with English was just beginning, and she was eager to see where it would take her. She knew there would be challenges ahead, but the triumphs of today had shown her that she was capable of overcoming them. With her goals set, Jessica decided to share her experiences with others who might be on a similar path. She logged on to an online English learning forum, a community of learners from around the world. She began to type, her fingers flying over the keys as she poured her story into the post. I spent the entire day practicing English, she started, from morning until night. I practiced pronunciation, intonation, and had real conversations. I was scared at first, but the more I spoke, the easier it became. Today was a turning point for me. She hit post, sending her story into the digital world. Within minutes, responses started to come in. Congratulations on your hard work, one person wrote. Your story is inspiring, said another. Keep going, you're doing great, encouraged a third. Reading the supportive comments, Jessica felt a sense of community and belonging. These were people who understood her struggle, who celebrated her achievements, and who would be with her on her journey. She replied to each comment with heartfelt thanks, feeling more connected than ever to the global tapestry of English speakers. The clock on her wall ticked toward midnight, signaling the end of her day-long quest. Jessica stood up and stretched feeling the contentment of a day spent in pursuit of her passion. She looked out of her window at the night sky, its vastness a mirror of the endless possibilities that lay ahead. Before turning off the light, Jessica made one final entry in her notebook. I am proud of myself, she wrote. Today, I live my dream of speaking English with confidence. Tomorrow. I will wake up and do it all over again, because I am a learner, and this is my journey. With that, she closed her notebook and turned off the desk lamp. The room fell into darkness, but for Jessica, the future was bright with the light of potential. She had faced her fears, embraced the challenge, and achieved more than she had thought possible. As she lay down to sleep, her mind was already dancing with the words she would speak tomorrow.